combating nutrition disinformation and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we have another episode of Jimmy Rants for you here today. And I love doing these for you guys. If you're brand new to the Jimmy Rants concept, welcome in. We really love having uh, these twice daily uh, rants where I basically take a topic in the world of nutritional health, usually about ketogenic diets or some mindset aspect of keto uh, or just living your life, and we rant about it. So the way we do this is we start off on Instagram Live, and all my beautiful followers are coming in down there right now. Go and follow me at Livin Low Carb Man on Instagram, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. And you can watch it live if you catch me live. You can also watch it there on the replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, it disappears from Instagram, but we house the video on YouTube, uh, the Jimmy Rants YouTube channel. Um, and then we also just debuted a brand new Jimmy Rants podcast, which has the best of the best highlights of what we rant about here on this show. JimmyRants.com is the website. If you can't remember all that stuff, just go to JimmyRants.com. It's all there for your convenience, and you can catch, out past, uh, catch up on past rants. But today's rant, all about why I eat keto. Because a lot of times people say, well, you're not doing very well on your keto, so maybe you should switch over to something else. And I get this a whole lot, you guys, where people say, well, it's obvious keto isn't working for you. It's obvious that ketogenic approach has failed you. Therefore, you should try something else because you're not getting any benefit whatsoever from your keto. Okay, so what they're referring to is weight. So are you getting weight loss from any given uh, nutritional protocol that you're doing? I could lose 50 pounds today if I lopped off one of my legs. Would that make me healthier? Would that give me great markers on blood tests? No, no. It would not. I'd be hopping around on one leg and it would be no fun. And yeah, I would lose weight, but would I have made myself healthier? So then the question becomes, okay, in order to get healthy, don't you have to lose weight? And that's a great question. The answer to that question is no. No. And it's shocking to people when they hear, oh my gosh, I thought you had to lose weight to get healthy. No. You get healthy and you put your body in a better metabolic state, then the side effect of doing that should be weight loss. We've had the cart before the horse for a very long time on this topic. And people like to put the focus on weight loss, which is why they believe things like calories, you know, being the be all end all in your diet or that it really doesn't matter as long as you eat in moderation. You, you've got all these mantras that people believe because they put the focus singularly on weight loss as first and foremost when they should have been putting it on health gains. So why I eat keto is all those health gains. And I want to go over just a few of them for you guys here today. And a lot of you will probably chime in that this happens for you as well. I tell people pretty often when I'm on podcasts that if I got no other benefit out of a ketogenic approach, that I would do it solely for the brain health. When you eat keto, which is defined as a low carbohydrate, moderate protein, high fat diet, when you eat that way and you're producing ketones, those ketones are fueling your brain. And people don't think about that. They hear dietitians and, and different people, oh, you need glucose to fuel your brain. And there are some glucose dependent functions uh, in the body, in the brain, various places. But you don't have to eat a lot of carbs to get that glucose. You can actually get that glucose from uh, protein converting into glucose from gluconeogenesis. There's lots of ways to get the glucose. 
So if you provide an alternative fuel source like fat as your primary way that you're feeding your body in a reduced carbohydrate context, guess what happens? Your brain goes on fire. Your brain is being fueled with the raw materials of what it's made up of. Did you know that upwards of 70% of your brain is fat? Fat. Yes, I just called you a fathead. And it's a very good thing. And it's one reason why you should be eating keto just to fuel your noggin. Because when you're fueling it with fat and reduced carbohydrate and moderate protein, you get the byproduct of ketones. And the ketones get up there, you guys. Christine will tell you, I used to be pretty angry when I did low-fat diets. My brain was screaming at me for fat. So I was very moody and and would get, I would snap at her and it was just really bad, but it was all the side effect of the bad nutrition. So now that I eat keto, I'm pretty chill. Uh, I take things in stride. Um, all of the mood just calms down. You also are able to recall things pretty well. And it, it's just, a, it's a beautiful thing, you guys. If you've never had your brain feel like it's clear and that you're uh, coherent when you're talking and when you're sharing, um, try keto. That's a big reason I do keto, you guys, is the brain health. But it goes beyond that. It goes even into cardiovascular health. When you look at the relevant markers on your cholesterol panel, for example, which I did a whole rant the other day all about cholesterol, and I've got another one coming up real soon uh, about the new guidelines that have come out about cholesterol, but I'll save that for the for the rant coming up soon. But for the purposes of what I'm talking about here, why I eat keto, when people say you failed, here's something you can tell them. My triglycerides are under 100. My HDL is over 50. And it's that ratio between triglycerides and HDL that is the relevant markers on your cholesterol panel. And guess what? When you carbohydrate restrict, what's the first thing that happens on your blood panel? Your trigs drop like a rock. When you eat more fat in your diet, like you do on a ketogenic diet, what is the first thing that happens on your cholesterol panel there, eating more fat? Your HDL cholesterol, the good stuff, goes up. And for most people, goes way up on the HDL, goes way down on the triglycerides. So you could have somebody that has a 100 on their uh, HDL cholesterol, and they can have 50 on their triglycerides, that is a 0.5 ratio. Anything under like two is really good. One is optimal. And if you had that ratio, and a lot of people that eat keto do, that is a clear sign of heart health being spectacular. No matter what the total cholesterol is, no matter what the LDL cholesterol is, those are less and less relevant markers and it's being borne out in the data on a daily basis. Um, and even go look up the work of Dave Feldman, cholesterolcode.com if you're interested in learning more about how you can manipulate those cholesterol numbers very easily, um, which is why we zero in on triglyceride HDL ratio, lowering the small dense LDL particles and, and other things that conventional wisdom is not doing. So, all right, so that's another reason why I eat keto. Another reason why I eat keto is, um, hello, what do I do here on a daily basis? And what do I do doing podcasts all over the internet and writing books and visiting conferences and doing speaking gigs and, and all this? Energy! Energy through the wazoo. The one that gets me the most is, wow, that keto is so uh, like failed you, Jimmy. You should really try something else. I'm like, and take away my energy source? How do you think, despite having extra weight on my body still, how do you think I have the energy to do all the things that I do? Has anybody ever stopped and thought about that? That if I was so unhealthy, as has been described, because of my keto, why would I have energy? Wouldn't I be lethargic? Wouldn't I? Wouldn't my body be trying to shut down because it's not being fueled well? Of course it would if I was not being fueled well. But then the converse of that is because I'm fueling it well with keto, 
I have energy out the wazoo. I would run circles around most people that are making these criticisms uh, because that's what keto did for me. So even if the weight never comes off completely, I have that energy that's just coming out the wasu. And as I get older, I want that energy. And it's going to sustain me and give me, um, I guess, all the things that I need to do in my life that I need to get done. It's going to be there for me to provide that energy. So what else uh, does it do? So obviously, every other marker in your body that can get better, will get better on keto. Inflammation markers, we've talked about this before. The HSCRP, which is a key inflammation marker in the body, that one goes down like a champ when you eat a real foods-based ketogenic diet. And it does for me. My latest one was 1.1, which anything under, uh, under three is pretty good, but under one is optimal. So I'm right there, 1.1. The only one that is still a bit, a bit of a challenge and I'm working on it is fasting insulin levels. And that one is right around 13, 14. Uh, optimally, you want that in the single digits uh, or ideally in the single digits, optimally under five. Uh, and I'm working on that. It's obvious my history of eating bad um, is making it a lot more challenging today to try to get that number under control. But where would it be if I wasn't keto? I would be type 2 diabetic, without a doubt. And I've never, ever, ever had type 2 diabetes. I don't know how, because I should have with the way I used to eat, but I don't. And so, because I don't, um, I'm trying to keep it that way. And keto is helping with that. Blood sugar obviously comes down. Blood pressure comes down. All of the relevant markers in your health get better when you eat keto. So the next time somebody comes up to you and says, well, I don't know why you're still eating that low carb, high fat ketogenic diet. Keto obviously isn't working for you because all they're seeing is perhaps you still have weight on your body. I want you to challenge them. Okay. Um, but what about my energy? But what about my brain health? But what about all of my health markers being really, really good despite having the higher weight? I think sometimes people just fall into this, your weight is your health mentality that they neglect that people's health could be really good. And the converse of that, the flip side of that, is we assume people are healthy simply because they're thin. And so we can't look at people that are thin and just assume all is well. My wife, Christine, she was 90 pounds when I met her. She was 95 pounds when we got married and she was metabolically as unhealthy as anybody you've ever met in your life. And we talk about it in our new book, Real Food Keto. Read the introduction to our book and you'll see all the things she went through and she has never once had a weight problem in her life. And she thought that her thinness may, me, meant that she was healthy. And now she realizes, oh my goodness, Look at all the metabolic damage that was going on inside my body and I was ignoring it because of my thinness. So when people say you failed, you got to show them this is why I eat keto. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. Welcome in. Hello, Lindy. Thanks for being here, everybody. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in, Grandma Does Keto. Hello, everybody. Hello from Arkansas, Joette. Thanks for being here. Hello, New Hampshire. Lots of people here today. Thanks for being here, you guys. Nancy says, I tell people keto is a healthy way of eating with weight loss merely as a side effect. And that's true. That's what it is. And I think the sooner we get people off of uh, looking at keto as a weight loss diet and more as a health promoting diet, the sooner we'll get this mantra of, well, keto didn't work. How do you know it didn't work? Did you look at my blood markers? Do you know any of my blood work? Do you know how my, my brain feels during the day? Do you, are you inside my body and you know what my energy levels are like? If you can't answer that question, then you really don't know if keto, quote, worked or not. Hello, Griff Sam 88 Thanks for being here. Jewelbug17, is Splenda Zero Squirt Bottle okay? What's that have to do with why I eat keto? 
Stay on topic, my dear. We will come back to questions at some point, but not on this Jimmy Rants. Uh, Grandma Does Keto, this is the thing that makes me want to pull my hair out. The anti-inflammatory and anti-seizure and great neuro effects are all worth it. Yes. I mean, I think about people that have various chronic health conditions that could be help, helped with a ketogenic approach, and even those people don't do it because even they fall into the trap of it's all about the weight loss. It yeah, And they don't see it as a therapeutic type of diet. Or the flip side of that one, it's so amazing kind of the way people rationalize either doing or not doing keto. Um, the flip side of, well, it's a therapeutic diet. Oh, it's only therapeutic. So it should be only for people with seizures and doing it for therapeutic purposes. If you're just doing it for general health, that's not the role that a ketogenic diet has. I, I'm sensing there's a whole Jimmy Rance just in that topic. All right, let's see. Yeah, you guys have a lot of general questions. Please stick to the topic that we're talking about here. And I do general question uh, episodes from time to time. Uh, Ant 223344 says, Jimmy, I'm a big guy and loving keto. I'm off all the sugar medications, uh, blood sugar medications, blood pressure coming down. Weight loss is a great addition I get for taking care of my body. Ant, you nailed it. And congratulations. You're exactly what I'm talking about here uh, in as much as people uh, who go keto to get healthy, they find that the weight loss is just merely that side effect of being healthy. So thanks for being here. Hello, Mrs. C uh, CEO J. Good to see you here. Culture dictates, uh, Oro Beckham says, you're exactly right. And I'm trying to reverse that cultural norm of your weight is your health. And if that's the reason why I still deal with weight on my body is to give hope and encouragement and inspiration to other people who are in this and they're also seeing weight still on their body despite being keto. If that's my reason for doing this, then by golly, I'm gonna be that champion for you guys that need to hear the message that you are healthy if you're eating keto and doing it well and tracking all of those markers. You won't find another guy that tracks his health markers to the level that I do, um, that has the body uh, type that I do. I track everything and I'm voracious about it and I'm honest about it. When things are a little out of whack, here's what I'm doing to try to address those things. And I also share that here's the good things that are happening. So when you think nothing good is happening because people say you failed on your keto, this is just another reminder to tell them of why you do eat keto. Uh, K. Denard one, thank you for your down to earth and humorous approach. I'm reading your book with Jason Fung on fasting. My wife and I generally skip breakfast. Awesome. All right. I just had blood work done. It came back great. Way to go. Killing fat Amy. Killing fat Amy. I like that. Um, I think some of us have to tweak our keto to get fully healthy. It's different for everyone. Lilligrand, you're exactly right. And it's something we talk about in, in my work pretty often is the whole bio-individuality of people that we can't put people in a box and say this one modality or, or just keto in general. Keto will cure everything. Nobody ever has said keto is the cure-all for everything. Keto plus other things could be helpful in the right circumstances for different people. I'm writing a book about this coming out next year called Keto Plus uh, with Dr. John Lemansky, where we're going to talk about keto being the basis of a really healthy lifestyle in your nutrition, but then you add various other hacks to your uh, protocol. Um, so it's Keto Plus and you get the full benefit. So stay tuned for that. Come in, I think it's in July next year is when that book's coming out. I do keto for rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. Yep, Joette. So you're showing that your why of eating keto is controlling those autoimmune conditions. Um, so if you still have weight on your body or whatever and people, oh, it's not working. Oh yeah, it is. Let me tell you how. Uh, it's a lifestyle, Jimmy, not a diet. Hey, you're preaching to the choir. 
All right. Never dreamed chronic pain would go away. Thank you, Downtown va Vapors. That is another benefit of why you eat keto. Chronic pain goes away when you stop inflaming your body uh, with grains and sugars. Those are the primary inflamers along with vegetable oils. Those are the primary things that inflame your body and make you less healthy. Ashton says, got off all meds. Numbers doing great. Weight loss is just a plus. I just love this life. You nailed it. That's exactly why. Mrs. CEO J says, my brother has a brain tumor and we keep his ketones very high to control tumor growth. Hasn't grown in three years. And that's a great, great reminder that there are people that this is life and death for that had they not gone keto and seen the benefits that come from this, um, and and maybe uh, their, your brother might have weight on his body. Oh my gosh, I thought you were doing keto. But maybe that's where the line is drawn. Everybody probably knows he has a brain tumor and you're trying to effectively deal with it. And so people don't, don't judge in that instance. So then my question becomes, why do we judge people that are just trying to be generally healthy? Why does it have to be something as extreme as, as uh, brain cancer before we get people to just shut up already <laughs> about how other people eat? It's, it's just amazing. Uh, ba, 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 ba. at 60 years old, I've reduced my beta blocker to half. Excellent. I used to be seriously addicted to carbs, but keto really showed me a much better energetic life. Uh, hashtag congratulations. Yes. Hello, Brittany. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm keto about two weeks. I work, or it works great. I don't have food cravings for the first time in my life. It's like freedom. Thank you for reminding me of that one too. Uh, I like Zoe. Hunger control and cravings are gone when you go keto. I've tried various other kind of variations of diets before. Obviously a low fat diet makes you very hungry. I've done a very high protein diet and an hour after having a very high protein meal, I'm starving. So for me, it becomes the satiation and the just not really thinking about food that comes from keto that gives me that kind of uh, freedom. What's up, Keto King? Thanks for being here, Brittany. Let's see. My best friend has serious health problems like epilepsy. Now I'm convinced, I've convinced her uh, to be on keto but to definitely cut down on car or I've convinced her not to be on keto, but to definitely cut down on carbs. Well, if someone has uh, epilepsy, that was the first therapeutic use of a ketogenic diet back in 1920s. Uh, in the 1920s, that's what they used it for. So your friend definitely could stand to benefit from being full on keto. I didn't know I had inflammation in my body until I went uh, with keto, just thought it was a reality of being fat and getting older. People don't understand that. Mutter Lori, thank you for that. I agree. Um, and it's one reason that I've gone on a rant and I'm probably going to go on more rants all about how we've got to stop accepting that as we get older, health will naturally decline. That is not the way we're supposed to be living. And yet everybody accepts it. Well, you're just getting older. Health's going to decline. No, <laughs> you're getting older. Obviously, things won't work as well as they used to, or you have to be a little more vigilant about it. But you should be very lucid into your older years. You should be able to have lots of energy into your older years. You should be able to be physically active into your older years. And what do we do? We accept people getting worse and worse in their health. We accept people having heart attacks. We accept people going into wheelchairs and nursing homes. And that is not the norm. Another whole Jimmy rants I can do just on that topic. Uh, when I went to the doctor, he said my cholesterol is high and he about fell off the chair. I mean, I told him I do low carb and the next time he wants to switch me to a high carb and sugar diet. Yeah, that does make sense in their mind because it's all about LDL and total cholesterol. I am so doing a rant soon, you guys, because there are new cholesterol guidelines that just came out that are so bad. I may try to do that for the afternoon uh, Jimmy rants because it's just, 
I couldn't believe what I was reading. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this Jimmy Rants today. JimmyRants.com is the website if you want to access all of these rants. And if you're not following me on Instagram, I had lots of interaction down there from Instagram peeps. Thank you for that. Uh, go to at living low carb man on Instagram and you can uh, basically interact with me live or you could watch the replay for 24 hours there. Then we hop it over to YouTube so you can watch it on demand, any of the rants. And then, uh, and then we have the brand new Jimmy Rants podcast that just released on Apple Podcasts. It's assimilating into all the podcast formats. So definitely check where you listen to podcasts and you can watch all of the Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com, you guys. And until next time, we'll see you then.